Page 83, number one. It says we've got three boys and seven girls, and they are asked how much money they have in their pockets. The boys have $2.50 each. The mean of the group of 10 children is $3.90. They want us to show that the girls have $31.50. So let's call the, go the boys X's and the girls Y's, and the sum of the, or the sum of all the Y's should be 31.5. Here's our formula for finding the mean of two groups. And all we've got to do now is fill it in. We know we've got $7.50 from the boys. We don't know what we have for the girls. We know we've got ends of 10 for the whole group. And we know it equals 390. So all we got to do now is get that sum of y's by itself. And we find out the girls do have $31.50. In part B, they say it's given that the seven girls have equal amounts of money, and they want us to find the standard deviation of all ten children. So let's start by writing the formula. We're going to take the sum of the x squares plus sum of the y squares divided by both ends, and we're going to subtract the mean squared. So what do we got here? Let's see. We know that um, there was three boys and they each had 250 cents. So if I square 250 and multiply it by 3, the girls each have 450, so I square those and multiply it by 7, divide that by 10, and then they told me the means both for the very beginning is 390. So I can just can fill that in my formula. And, and then I'm just going to type in what I've written down in my calculator. Uh, I don't need to do all the in incidental calculations. I just need to give them an answer now. 0.9165, that's our standard deviation. Okay, let's go on to the next one. All right, this is a pretty easy one. Uh, they just give us three box plots all on the same scale, and they want us to describe the progress made in the class over these tests, first, second, and third. Well, it's obvious that the medians are improving because they're getting higher and the results are becoming more varied. The boxes are getting bigger. And in part B it says which produced the least skewed. Well, you can tell the third test, it looks roughly symmetrical. Now test one, it's going to be positively skewed because you can see the median is over towards the left. And then test two is going to be negatively skewed. You can see the median is going to be over towards the right. Let's look at a more, little more challenging one. In problem number six, he gave us a table. They've got these two kinds of fish. One's African, one's Arabian. And they give us the number of fish, they give us the mean, and they give us a standard deviation. They want us to find the mean for both. So let's take a look at our information here. We've got the mean of both is equal to the x, sum of the x's and the sum of the y's plus the sums of the n's. So we need to know the sums of the x's and the sums of the y's, assuming the x's are one and the y's are the other fish. All right, so let's take a look here. We know that the mean of this is this, and we know the formula is a sum of x's over n. So we can find the sum of the x's. And we find out that first, for the sum of the African fish is 6,162. And then the Arabian fish will do the same thing. We'll put the mean in. We'll make it equal to the sum of y's over 15. And then the sum of y's is going to be 1,182. Now the mean of both is we're going to add both of those together. Those are the sums of our x's. And then both of our n's, that's going to be 75. And we get a mean of 97.92 centimeters. Now part b. They tell us that they want us basically to find the sum of the x squares and then find the standard deviation. Um, I'm going to stick with the uh, notation that I've been using. Um, so let's go ahead here. First, standard deviation. The formula for that is going to be the sum of the x squared over n minus the mean squared. So let's see what we've got here. First, we got to get the sum of the x squares by themselves. So let's break into two categories. We got our African fish and we got our Arabian fish. So let's start with the African. We know the, the standard deviation is 6.8. We don't know the sum of the x squares, but we do know that n is, and we do know what the mean is. So we can fill in everything but the sum of the x squares. And now all we got to do is square both sides, and then get the sum of the x squares by themselves. So we're going to add, and then multiply, and we're going to find out that the sum of the x squares is 635,611.8. Now we're going to do the same thing with the Arabian side. 
we need to find their sums of x's. We fill in all the information they gave us, and then all we've got to do now is get the sum of the x's by themselves. We square both sides. We're going to add, and then we're going to multiply, and we're going to find the sum of the x squares is 934,000, no, I'm sorry, 93,406.2. Now the both. All we got to do is put our sum of our x squares together over the sum of our, both of our n's. We got our n's are 75. We know the mean for both. We figured that out already. It's 97.92. All we've got to do is put this in our, in our calculator and find out that the standard deviation is going to be 11.485. Let's write that down. And then we're going to round the three significant figures. That should give us 11.5 centimeters. Okay, let's go on to the next one. For number seven, it says we've got 11 people and they give us these scores for when they're throwing their darts. And they want us to find the range, the interquartile range, standard deviation, and scores. I'm going to tell you right now, this is not that many numbers and we can do this. If they give you a bunch of numbers, just put them in the calculator and figure them all out by uh, plugging them into uh, menu six. Anyway, like I said, there's not that many here. We've got 11, so that means the uh, sixth guy is going to be our median. It's pretty easy to tell that that's going to be Q1 and 54 is going to be Q3. And now they want us to find the range. That says 180 minus 41 or 39. IQR, that's going to be the third quartile minus the first quartile or 8. And then they want us to find the standard deviation. The sum of the x's squared over n minus the mean squared. Well, for this, I'm just going to put everything in the calculator. I'm going to go back and double check and make sure the number is accurate. And then I'm going to go ahead and look at all those uh, calculations the calculator will give me. And see, that's everything I need right there to fill in this formula. So don't go and square everything. Just put in the x's squared. We know n is 11. We know that the mean, you see how it's uh, a decimal? We can just use the 677 divided by 11. And then we get the standard deviation. Now for part B, it says which one's the best summarization for the variation. Well, you notice it's got an outlier. The 180 is pretty different than the other numbers. It's going to affect the standard deviation because the standard deviation uh, uses all the numbers. IQR is just about the middle 50%. So in this case, the, the IQR is going to be better. Keep in mind, outliers, median, and IQR is better. If there's no outliers, mean and standard deviation is better. Okay, let's go on to the next one. In problem number eight, they give us the heights of a group of 28 people. They tell us the mean is 172.6, and then they tell us the standard deviation is 4.58. They tell us that one person with a height of 161.8 leaves the group. So now there's only 27, and they want to find the mean height of the remaining 27. So let's think about that. If I want to find the mean height of the 27, I need this sum of the x's of the 27 and then divide that by 27. I don't have the sum of the x's of the 27. But I can figure it out if I use the mean for 28, I can figure out the sum of the x's for the 28. And I know what the mean is, that's 172.6. And I know what n is, that's 28. So I can figure out what the sum of the x's are for the 28. That's going to be uh, 4,832.8. Now I can take away the one person, the 161.8, and that leaves me a sum of x's for the 27 of 4,671. And see, now all I got to do is divide that by 27, and I have the mean of 173 centimeters for the group of 27. Now, problem number two, they want us to find the sum of the x squares for the 28 people and then find the standard deviation for just the 27. So here it's kind of nice because they're basically telling us how to do it. If we write the standard deviation formula down, I can put in what I have. I know the standard deviation and I don't know the sum of the x squares, but I do know 28 and I do know the mean for the group of 28 is 172.6. So now all I got to do is get the sum of the x squares by itself. I square both sides. Go ahead and square this. I'm going to add this on the other side. 
and then I'm going to multiply both sides by 28. That's going to give me a pretty big number. It's going to be 8 834,728.6192. That's the sum of the x squares for the 28. Now, I can take the 161.8 and square it and take that away. And now I've got the sum of the x squares for just the 27. And see, now all I've got to do is plug that into the standard deviation formula. I'm out of room. Let's go up here. Uh, standard deviation is going to be... All right, so the sum of the x squares, I know that now. And I know what n is, that's 27. And I know what the mean of 27 is, because I just figured that out. And see, now all i got to do is plug that in the calculator and find out that the standard deviation is 4.16 at three significant figures. Okay, let's look at the next one. In number nine, we've got 120 people, and they were asked to read an article. And then their times were taken to how long it took them to read the article. All right. Um, so here, let's do this. We have time in seconds and number in people. Okay, so we're supposed to calculate the estimates of the mean and the standard deviation. All right, because this is group data, the best we're going to be able to do is come up with an estimate. And if you recall, when we're doing a mean, we're going to take the mid-class values times the frequencies and then add them up and divide by the sum of all the frequencies. So first we're going to do is find the mid-class values, and all we're doing is taking the boundaries, adding them up, and divide by two. So we get these, and see now they're going to represent each class, and we're going to multiply them by their frequencies. And I know it seems silly, but by writing this out like this, you're demonstrating that you understand this method, and it's a good idea to do. So anyway, if I write this, now I'm not going to multiply all that out. I'm going to go in my calculator now, and I'm going to figure out what the answers are going to be. I'm going to go to uh, Math 6, I'm going to enter in my mid-class values and their frequencies, and then I'm going to do uh, Option 3, and this gives me all the information I need. I know what the mean is. The mean is 45.833333, and if I'm going to round the three sweeping figures, that's 45.8. And I'm going to keep that on my calculator while I finish the rest of the problem. The standard deviation is the sum of the um, mid-class values squared times the frequencies divided by the sum of the frequencies, and then subtract the mean squared. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write down the sum of the x squares, just like I did before, and then I'm going to pull that off my calculator. And see, now I've got all the information I need to fill in this formula. I know the sum of my x squares, that's 27,000, no, 278,620. I know n is 120. I know the mean, we figured that out a minute ago. Make sure you give a lot of digits on this because we're not, we don't want to round. And then I also know what the standard deviation is. It's 14.8. Now keep in mind, you've got to make sure the values you put in the calculator are correct. And you can double check it by putting the other thing in the calculator. But you should be right with this. All right, uh, let's move on to the next one. In problem number 11, they give us the heights of a group of 82 children, and they summarize the data, and it's coded. So we have this sum of x minus 130 is equal to negative 287, and the total of the standard deviation is equal to 6.9. In part 1, they want us to find the mean height. Now that's the actual mean height, not the coded mean. So what we're going to do is, is we're going to take these x minus 130s and divide by n, but then we're going to add back the 130 that we took away. And that'll give us the actual mean. And see, now all I've got to do is fill in the information into my formula and then figure out that the mean is going to be 126.5. And the units are centimeters, so it'll be centimeters. Now, part two. In part two, they want us to find the sum of all the x minus 130 squares. Well, that's why they gave us the standard deviation, because if you write the standard deviation formula, you'll recognize I've got these squares here. Um, and so all I've got to do now is figure out what I can fill in. I know I know the standard deviation. I know I don't know the x minus 130 squares. I know n and the mean. Now, we just found the mean, but that's the actual mean. What we need is the coded mean. That means that's the mean where they took away 130 from every x. Well, if they took away 130 from every x, 
then the mean is going to drop by 130. So the coded mean is going to be 126.5 minus 130 or negative 3.5. That's the mean I'm putting in my formula because if this first part is coded, then the second part has to be coded. All right, so now all we got to do is get the sum of the x minus 130 squares by themselves. I'm going to start by squaring both sides, and that's going to get rid of the square root sign here on the right. And now what I'm going to do is add the 12.25 to both sides, and that's going to give me 59.86, and that's going to equal the sum of x minus 30 squares all divided by 82. And see, now all I got to do is multiply both sides by 82, and I could get my answer of 4908.52. Or, if I round the three significant figures, it'll be 4,910. All right, let's take a look at the next one. On number 12, it says we've got a data sample of 36, and then they give us this other information, the sum of the x minus 45 is equal to negative 148. And the sum of the x 145 squares is equal to 3,089. They want us to find the mean and standard deviation of the 36 values. All right, so let's go ahead and start. We'll find the mean. It's going to be uh, coded data they've given us. So we're going to have to add back the 45 that they took away from every data point. But all I got to do now is just plug things in. 148 over 36 plus 45. That gives me a mean of 368 over 9 or 40.888. That'll be 40.9 and three significant figures. All right, that wasn't too bad. Now, in uh, the second part of this first question, it says to find the standard deviation. So we're going to start by writing the standard deviation formula here. And keep in mind, both of our pieces are coded. And all we've got to do is substitute the information they give us. We've got the first part in N. And then we've got our sum of x squares minus 45. And all we got to do is put that in. And now we just got to enter this information in our calculator exactly the way it is. Making sure to double check that you didn't make any mistakes. Look, I got a 149. It should be a negative 148. It looks good now. Press enter. Make it a decimal. Our standard deviation is going to be 8.30. Three significant figures. All right, now question number two. It says we've got one extra data point of 29. It's added to the sample. Find the standard deviation of all 37 values. Well, keep in mind that 29, it's not coded. And so we're using coded information. We're taking away 45 from every data point. But we can still use this formula. and we've got the sum of the x minus 45 squared that's before we added the extra data point but now what we've got to do is we've got to take that data point which is 29 we've got to subtract 45 from it and then we've got to square it and so we're going to get 16 squared so we're going to add 256 to the 3089 we're going to divide by 37 instead of 36 and now we're going to do the same thing with the second part. What we're going to do is we're going to take the negative 148. That's what we had before. We've got to take the 29 and subtract 45 from it. And then that's going to give us um, 16. And so, or negative 16. And so now all we've got to do is enter information in our calculator and find the answer. We've got to double check and make sure we do it accurately. And I can't stress this enough, if you're going to rely on the calculator, you got to make sure you type every number in correctly, which means you should go back and double check it. And you see I missed this 3 here in the beginning. So now I'm going to press enter. I find out my answer is 8.411.833. 8.411, that's going to be 8.41 to 3, so we get figures. All right, let's take a look at the next one then. On problem number 13, we've got 150 cars and we've got all this information about them. Um, and if you recall, there were two formulas. Both are on the formula sheet for variance and standard deviation. This is the other formula. 
So let's look at both of these formulas. For variance, we have the sum of the x squares over n minus the mean squared. That's the one we've been using. And then there's this other one that we haven't been using very much. And it's the sum of the x minus the means, all squared, divided by n. Now, in this case, basically we're going to have a strategy. You'll notice most of the information they've given us will enable us to find the variance using the first formula. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the variance, not standard deviation, in the first formula. And then what we're going to do is we're going to substitute that variance into the second formula along with n. And then all we've got to do is solve for the sum of x minus mean squared. So let's get started. We know the sum of the x squares is 8,287.5. We know n is 150. The mean, that's the same thing as the sum of the x's divided by n. So that's going to be 645 divided by 150. We've got to square that. And then all we're going to find out is we get the variance is going to equal 36.76. Now, we'll substitute that in the variance for the other one. And see, now all I've got to do is get that sum of x minus mean squares by themselves. That's just multiplying both sides by 150. So we're going to find out that the answer is 5,514 or 5,510, the three significant figures. Okay, hope that helped, and thanks for watching.